Okay, so thanks everyone for tuning in. Today we have Suad Taban, who's going to tell us about her work on emerging gate symmetries and quantum operations. Um, Suad, thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Thank you, organizer, for this invitation. I am a PhD student in Universidad de los Andes in Colombia. I am talking about emerging gate symmetry and quantum operation. This is, this is a joint work with Professor Balachandra, Ivan Burbano, and my PhD advisor, Professor Andres Reyes. So our, uh, the question that we want to answer is how to associate a von Neumann entropy to an algebraic quantum state. Uh, six years ago, Balachandra and uh, et al, they abord this question and they want to associate a notion of entanglement measure, that is the von Neumann entropy, for a general quantum set, system, in particular for fermionic system, where we have indistinguishable, indistinguished particles, where the, the usual notion of entanglement measure, that is the partial trace, is doesn't define. So they propose to use restriction of a state to a subalgebra using the ideas of Viola et al that proposed in, in 2004. So they propose to use the GNS representation that provides a canonical purification. They restrict this state to, to the original subalgebra and obtain an entropy. But this entropy is, is not unique because the irreducible decomposition of the GNS space it doesn't either. So our goal is explain this ambiguity in terms of the modular theory of Tomita Takesaki. We do that and we obtain an emergent gauge symmetry that define a family of quantum operation in the emergent system. So to show that, I will uh, uh, review quickly the genus construction, the Tomita Takesaki modular theory, uh, show you how uh, appear the emerged gauge symmetry and how to define quantum operation. And finally, I will give the, the example of a bipartite system where we have a tensor product of all space. So, uh, in the algebraic approach to quantum physics, we start with a sister algebra. In this, during this work, we only consider finite dimensional unit of algebra. So we have states over this algebra that are positive linear functional that are uh, normalized, and we can interpret it as the expectation values of the element of the observable algebra. In this work, we only consider faithful states. That is the expectation values of the positive, if the expectation values of the positive elements are zero, are zero the, then this element must be the null, the null one. So the genus construction, the Gelfand Neyman Segal construction, start with a sister algebra and a state and construct a genus space and Hilbert space a cyclic representation and a cyclic with a cyclic vector. So how construct this space? We use the vector space structure of the original algebra and we denote the elements with a, uh, with a ket notation. We define the inner product in, in this Hilbert space through the, through the state with this expression here. But this definition it doesn't define an inner product, an inner product because it's degenerate. So we construct a null space with the element that satisfies this construction and define the Hilbert space like the collection of the algebra, like a vector space with this null space. In our case, since the state is faithful this null space is trivial. So our algebra, the Hilbert space, are isomorphisms like vector spaces. Uh, the unique cyclic representation is defined by the product that we have in the algebra in that way. And the cyclic vector is just the the one associated with the unity in the, our original algebra. With this vector, we can uh, write the 
the state, like the equation six, that's it, we, we have a, 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 a pure state. In that sense, we, we say that the genus construction, construction gives us a canonical purification of our original state, omega. So, uh, since uh, our state is faithful, this representation is also be faithful. And be, because since the state is faithful, the cyclic vector is, is be also separating for our algebra. That is a, a sister algebra too. That is satisfies this relation. If we apply any element of the algebra to this state and this is zero, this implies that, the, the, that this element is the null one. So, uh, we, we want to, we also, we consider uh, finite unital algebra. So the, the all, there are a theorem, the show Takisaki, the, say us that all the finite dimensional algebra can write as a direct sum of a, a matrix algebra. For each, for each algebra, we have a unique positive integer that satisfies this relation. Uh, but this structure, we have uh, the identity of each sub-algebra, the, the matrix algebra, that define out orthogonal projection of these algebras. With that, we can construct a projector in our Hilbert, uh, in our GNS Hilbert space through the cyclic representation that gives us a decomposition of the GNS space into reducible superrepresentation. This decomposition is unique. But there have an open question. This representation, this superpresentation are reducible. We can uh, have a, a decomposition of each of them into a reducible superpresentation. Each of them with uh, multiplicity in, uh, in sub R. This uh, decomposition is not unique. And this will give, uh, we will show further that uh, the ambiguity in the entropy appeared because that. So we will show that modular theory will characterize this decomposition. And we give rise to a novel gauge symmetry. So we will have an emergence system that we call C with observable algebra defined as the linear operator over the genus space. We have a subsystem A that is just the original algebra that we have. Uh, we remember that is isomorphic because we, we start with a um, faithful state. So this representation is faithful. And we have a canonical purification since this embedding of the subsystem A in the subsystem C. We can uh, show here that this is the this pure state is a restriction of the uh, of the bigger algebra f to the original algebra a and so this restriction of abstraction to, to a subalgebra is the uh, generalization of the partial trait in the case when we have a system with tensor product so uh, we have the question if we have this system a there exists another system, uh, an Ansija system B, complementary to A. The answer is yes, a modular theory gives this. So uh, we we'll review some, uh, some basis in Tomita Takesaki modular theory. We start uh, with a sister algebra. We define his uh, over a uh, Hilbert space. And we define its commuton as all the elements of the bigger algebra that is all the linear operator of this uh, uh, Hilbert space that commute with, with this element. And we need a cyclic and separating vector for the algebra and for his commuton. In fact, we only need the, a cyclic vector for the algebra and his commuton because if we have if we have a vector that is cyclic for the algebra, it will be separating 
for his commuter. And we, as we are in the finite dimensional case, this C star algebra it would be von Neumann algebra. That is the, 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 the block star of this theory. So if we have a von Neumann algebra and a cyclic and separating vector, we can define the Tomita operator that, that is an antilinear operator over the Hilbert space that satisfies this condition. This is an involution. Sorry. So we can apply the polar decomposition for this operator and obtain the operator delta that is a positive self adjunct and we call it the modular operator and the anti-unitary operator J that is the modular conjugation. They satisfy this condition by the definition of the modular decomposition. And the cyclic and separating vector will be invariant under, under these modular uh, objects. So the modular operator will define a modular group through this, the adjunct action that, that give us a one parameter automorphism group on the original algebra. And uh, Tomita Takisaki theorem tells us that the algebra, it will be invariant under this uh, one parameter automorphism group. And also tell us that the, the operator J uh, acting on where are, that the operator J can, can give us the commutant through this action. So we will stay only with the first part of this theory. So this, uh, if we have this, uh, this operator, the modular conjugation through the polar composition of the Tomita operator, we can answer the, the first question. What is the complementary system to the, to the emergent system C? Well, the answer is the, the commutant algebra of the first one, given by the action of this uh, operator, of the conjugation operator. Uh, to answer the, the second question, how we characterize the, the irreps of the genus uh, construction, we can define um, the matrix units on the original matrix algebras using these symbols and define the, uh, the group of unitaries of the uh, of element of the original algebra as uh, the, with, we denoted with the letter G. So this unitary element acts on the GNS uh, uh, Hilbert space via this representation. That is, they act like elements of the commutant algebra. In fact, this defines all the unitaries of the commutant algebra. If we do that, if we choose a unitary element of the algebra, we can define the following projectors that induce projectors in the GNS space through this relation. This is because the operator J are anti-unitary and the representation is faithful. So, and in the, uh, you can show that these are indeed projectors or uh, orthogonal projectors in the GNS space. They give us uh, the irreducible decomposition that we that we want. So, if we sum over the irreducible part, we obtain the projector in the reducible superrepresentation. So we, can, we have the following decomposition of the Hilbert space. This, the first uh, direct zone, which refers to the reducible uh, decomposition, and this one to the reducible one, where we have that for each R, these space are equivalent. So we have each effect with, with multiplicity in R. Um, and this, uh, all these irreducible space are the span of this of this element. So we have here the the action of the 
G group, of the unitary group. So we can regard this group as a gauge group for the original algebra and the sense of Doppler, Hack, and Robert. Why? Uh, first, because the, uh, the action of this group in the genus space is remain in notice as far as system A is concerned because they belong to the commutant algebra, to the auxiliary system B. If we interpret the, the algebra of the emergent system C as the algebra of field, we can obtain that we uh, recover the original algebra by the intersection of this algebra of field and the commutant of the uh, of the action of the group of the of our gauge group. Uh, for that, we can interpret uh, then this group as a uh, as a gauge group in this sense. In fact, uh, we can show here in. in in the context of, of Doppler and Roberts, that this group select the observable algebra out of the field algebra. The, the, that is, select the super selection sectors. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we have the by the Gleason th theorem that for each state, we can have a density operator belong to the algebra that satisfy this relation. In particular, this density operator has trace one and they are positive. Indeed, the most be strict positive is our state is phase one because we, since this is positive and using the cyclicity of the trace, we obtain the, the, the the expectation value of, of the positive element, uh, if we if we ex exist that this uh, state is, is, is faithful, we have that is faithful even only if this satisfies this relation. So we will like this is satisfied for all a are not uh, doesn't be um, zero. So that if we have a faithful state, the density operator associated to it must be invertible. And we define the set of states of all states over an algebra, such that the, <laughs> this, this uh, positive functional is V a state. If there is no confusion, we would, we, like it's usual, we don't distinguish between the, st the algebraic state and the density operator. So, uh, for our uh, emergent system C, we define the state of a state over it like that. We can see it like the functional uh, one or with density operators. So uh, the important fact is for each state, we have uh, one, a, a unique density operator. Like we have a, a canonical Im embedding of the original system in this emergent one, we can define, define the restriction of this state to the first one, such that we reobtain our orig original state omega. That is, we can say that we will restrict uh, the addition of the state for that one that are the, uh, ex the extension of omega to the system C. So if, if we stay with this subset, uh, in particular, uh, the density operator uh, defined by the cyclic and separate inverter belong to this restriction. So we have the following proposition. If we have a, a, a density operator belong to the, this, the, 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 to the restriction state, then the quantum operation defined by this uh, relation, it will belong to, to, the, to this um, subset of the states that restricted to the system A, a recover our original state omega. We only need to, to 
uh, that the sum of these uh, cross operator was V1 because we want to preserve the trace and we need that these uh, cross operators belong to the commuter. Well, uh, the proof is, is very easy. We use here the definition. If you use the, the fact that this belong to the commutant, we can uh, inter, uh, exchange these two, uh, these two elements using the cyclicity of the trace. This condition, that uh, this is on one, that are complete, and we obtain our origi original state. So, we can cho choose the Scrouse operators like uh, the projectors that we define below, uh, after, below, sorry. We remember that this, this projector are the one that selects the irreducible uh, space. So we uh, recall the, these elements uh, when we apply this cross operator we the <coughs> sorry the previous the quantum operation we call it in that way like uh, e sub g uh, so this uh, quantum operation it will be characterized by by this element we remember that these are the element of the group g of the unitary of the algebra that are our gauge group in particular, the operators, when we choose G equal to the identity of the algebra, was used in the paper of Balachandra and Am in, or, in order to compute entanglement entropy that are arising from restriction. They suggest that they can be extended and characterized using Tomita Takesaki theory, but we finish this work here. So, if you study this density operator, explicitly is given by this relation. With that, we can uh, find that the agent vectors of this operator will be this one, that is the projectors uh, defined by the action of the unitaries over the cyclic and separating vectors. And the agent values are given by this relation. So the von Neumann entropy, it will be G dependent in that way. So the entropy ambiguity is parameterized by the group G, by the gauge, by our gauge group. So can you, can you, can you um, in physics terms, uh, explain to us uh, how you go from the from the algebra of operators uh, to to von to Neumann entropy? I understand that there's been like many slides and equations uh, between the formula 36 and the starting point, but uh, is there some, some simple intuitive understanding that, that one can get here? Um, well, we use the fact, we, we start from the algebra of observ the observable algebra and the state omega. And for each omega, we, we have a and of a density operator associated to it. So our objective, our goal is to find this density operator associated to omega. So we find that it- Sorry, so, 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 so to understand, so when you say state, state omega, you mean like a global pure state? Yes, like a global one, uh, because- So, so basically, the, 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 the idea is to define the radius density matrix not in terms of a partial trace. Exactly, because in this in this context we don't have a, a product a tensor product system. So yeah. in, using partial trace, we're using restriction to an algebra. So I, I have here. So we define we we can find density operators in the emergent system in the big one in the in the system C. And we restrict ourselves to this state that when we restrict it to the original system A, we reobtain the original state omega. So we do that here with this, with this set also of states. These this row are states of the, of the big system C 
But when we restrict it to the system A, that is the given word with the stick representation, we will obtain the original state omega. So we can say that this omega is related to this pro, to this density operator. But we like this one doesn't belong to the algebra P, PA. Instead, they belong to the bigger algebra F. And this is not unique. We have a, a family of, of these of density operators that satisfy this condition. We characterize this family with this quantum operation. We have many, as many as cross operators that satisfy this relation. We can choose the, this cross operator with these projectors. If we do that, we can write explicitly this density operator in terms of this projector. And if we do that, we can obtain the agent values of this density operator in terms of the of the unitary G. And with the, if we have the, this agent volume, the von Neumann entropy given by the trace of rho log rho is, is shown in this way. So it's is given by the agent values of the of the density operator rho that depend of the unitary G. So if you if you so, were to apply if you were to apply this framework say to, to a quantum field theory, um, what would you get as as I mean, would you get something that is finite or would you get you, you would say only that this is a completely ambiguous question and there is no answer to it? What would be the answer? Well, in, in the concept of quantum field theory, we will always have an, an observable algebra, but in this case, we have a, we are working in the infinite, infinite dimensional case. In principle, we, we must to be able to obtain this ambiguity too. In fact, we are working in that, but in, in, a, in a bigger context with homogeneous space. But in principle, we think that we must obtain the, the same thing. So, so if we take a spin chain, uh, or like a finite spin chain, I mean, with many uh, spins, uh, you would claim that, I mean, the partial trace is well defined and I can define reduced density matrix if I start with uh, the pure state. Uh, how, how should I think about this ambiguity in 36 in this case? Because this used to be a system that falls precisely in, in, into the class of systems that you consider uh, with finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. Maybe large, but finite dimensional. Mm -hmm. So I, I take, say, Ising spin. I, 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 but I, don't, I don't know how to interpret it in terms of, of, of physics. We, we obtained that, but I, I don't know now how to compare it with, with the, the experience. So with the critique interpretation, I because for for Ising spin chain, I can compute the partial trace. Uh, I get some some big matrix, maybe big matrix. Then I, I can ask somebody clever to 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 deal with big matrices to compute the the quantum entropy, right? Uh, there is one answer, right? Um, but maybe so. A related question is. Is this approach equivalent to the usual approach in the finite dimension case, or? Yes, yes. In fact, at the end, I will show you the bipartite case and how we obtain this ambiguity in this case. The, but, uh, oh, oh, okay, all right. Oh, okay, but, but then, yeah, my next question was, in fact, does this emergent uh, symmetry, what does it look like in the usual tensor product description? Sorry, can you be the uh, so so you're saying the, the this uh, the, this way of computing uh, reduced density matrices is equivalent to taking the partial trace and when the Hilbert space dimension is finite. Yeah, right? yes. Restrict restrict states to subalgebra is equivalent to take the partial trace in the system that is defined the final the partial trace. Right, but in this, uh, in your description, you have an emergent gauge symmetry of some sort. And I was just wondering what it looks like in the usual dented product description. In the usual one, it is looked like, be because if we uh, obtain the canonical purification, there is ambiguity in choose the, the, second, the second vector. We will, show, we will show that at the end of the- Okay, all right. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I think you can continue. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I remember the fact that we have the following relation between the trace in the original algebra and the uh, genus space and in the, in the algebra given by the, by the genus representation. This equality is given because the original algebra is a direct sum of matrix algebras, and this one is because the unicity of the trace. So, uh, since the Gleason theorem, uh, we have a unique density uh, operator in the original algebra that satisfies this relation with the state omega. So, with that, we can propose this following proposition. So, if we have a state that is a that is a that is restriction to the first system. Uh, is just the our original states omega, and if this is a density operator is invariant under the antilinear operator that is commute with it, then the unique density operator in the commutant that implementing the restriction of the original uh, of the of this density operator is given by this one. That is is given by the same a uh, quantum operation that is is satisfied the following if we in the system c we have the trace over the gns space in in this way that the finite state and in the commutant we have this relation so uh, this led us to to introduce this following proposition the von Neumann entropy of this density operator uh, coincides with the original one. And the von Neumann entropy with, of this one coincides with the uh, uh, von Neumann entropy of the density operator defined by the quantum operation. That is, it is characterized by the uh, unitary, by the gauge group, the unitary elements of the algebra. So in particular, if we compute the relative entropy between this state and this one, uh, we obtain that is just the, the difference because the entropy of this state and this one. Uh, then we have like a, a second uh, thermodynamic law, but in, in the sense. So what we have with, with this, we, we show that the entropy of this element is, will be always uh, bigger or equal to this one. We remember that this is defined by the quantum operation and this one is given when we talk uh, the, the unitary element, the identity. So in particular, if we restrict uh, the density operator uh, rho g of the system C to the system A, we obtain the entropy rho 1. And uh, if we restrict it to the second, to the ancillary system B, we obtain this entropy. So in the ancillary system, we can uh, give a path on this unitary element and the one that when we obtain the, the, the least entropy, it will be coincide with the entropy of the original system A. Then uh, uh, we can show that G is a gauge group for the system A. They, they, they doesn't feel any change uh, if we apply the uh, if we act with this uh, element in the GNS space. And all the ambiguity in the, old, in the entropy is carried by the system B. All, all one is encoded here. So uh, this is a, a general uh, characterization for all systems that are defined by a finite dimensional observable algebra. In particular, uh, if we apply that to a buffer system, we obtain the following. So, uh, for simplicity, we were we are using uh, we are take n equal equal to one. So our algebra is matrician. 
and the density operator r is given by this expression we take uh, the these elements uh, uh, strictly uh, positive because we need that this uh, state will be faithful so we construct an orthonormal basis for the gns space in, in that way and um, we uh, define an isomorphism between the GNS space and this tensor product space uh, by this operator. They give me the orthonormal base of the GNS space to the tensor product one. Um, always, if we have an operator of the algebra of the system C, they change in that way, that the usual one. So the, um, the conjugation operator, uh, given by Tomita Takisaki, it would be act in this space in that way. They exchange the level of the, the they exchange the, the, the elements of, of this space in that way. So the algebra, uh, the, the algebra in our case, is will be there, so we will, the, the cyclic representations, it only acts in the first entry. And in its component, its component it will be act in the second entry. When this is uh, the conjugation of this, over the complex conjugation. So in that context, we will have that our system A, it will be A, tensor product the identity that is, is isomorphic to our original algebra A. B, it will be that. So in, in the case, we will see explicitly that this is the complement of this, uh, of this subsystem. And obviously, uh, the system B is the commutator of the system A. And the system C is the composite of, the, of these two ones. So if we take um, a unitary element of the gauge group, we obtain that the restricted density operator is will given by this equation, where these eigenvalues are given by this relation. Uh, that is, is, uh, is labeled by the element of the unitary, of the unitary. And its restriction to the simple to the system B coincides with with that that we proposed before uh, uh, through this quantum operation. So the ambiguity is encoded in the freedom of choosing the second system that is proposed on, uh, to through thermal field dynamics. And uh, we are uh, rotate the projector P under the action of the unitary in the commutant, this one, uh, here are yeah, an, an equality. And this is equivalent to rotate the, to, to the vector, to the cyclic and separating vector omega. So we see here that this is the, uh, the, purif the usual purification in the back in the in a composite system. So we have a, a freedom to choose the second auxiliary system. We will have the same uh, purification even if we uh, choose uh, if we rotate through a, a unitary the second part. Uh, here there is a typo. There is a G no. Are you? So the ambiguity appears in this context because the purification is not unique. We have this freedom of choose the second one. In the general case, the, the ambiguity appears because there, uh, there is a no unique form to decompose into irreducible the genesis base. The, uh, so change in the purification of the mixed state um, is will be appear through the action of the gauge group through Tomita Takesaki theory. I forget to say here that this state uh, it will be compute through the usual, the usual form by a partial trace. I don't know, it's clear. 
I answer the 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 given. Okay. So 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 maybe I I, I should clarify that at least for myself. Uh, so 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 if I had a I mean, if I think about uh, systems in which Hilbert space factorizes, right? Um, somebody gives me, again, for Ising spin chain, uh, some reduced density matrix, then in this, in this setup, I can act with a unitary that acts on all the sides that are not part of my reduced density matrix. And I'm going to get, I mean, in the full sta state, I'm going to get still the same reduced density matrix. Yeah. So for, for, so for the full state, yeah. I'm going to get still the same reduced density matrix. So shall I understand what you did here as a generalization of this observation or feature for situations in which hyperspace does not necessarily factorize? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the uh, this proposal. Okay. This. I don't know. Tutor that I present you is a generalization. This can apply to any quantum system that are uh, that have an observable algebra that is finite dimensional. We can apply to all of them. And in the case that this uh, this system is a, a tensor product one, that we can use this isomorphism and obtain the the novel result. This this one. If we start with an, a faithful state, we will always have this isomorphism. So we can uh, work in the bipartite system or in the genus space, as we like. But in the general case, when we don't have uh, this situation like uh, like system with indistinguished particles, we we can work in 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 this context in the in the one given by the GNS construction. Yes? Okay, thanks. Well, we now are, uh, work in an extension of this, of this machinery for system that, uh, that doesn't have finite dimensional uh, algebras. We will, we are in, in study the ethylene molecule because this was introduced by Balachandra et al. And they suggest that this, uh, that this molecule uh, can uh, show the, the same sort of, okay. uh, uh, the same features that we showed before. So we uh, start with an homogeneous space that is this Gaussian space when G is a company group and H is a non abelian finite group. And we have a transitive action of the group H over, over this space. For the ethylene molecule, the configuration space is given by the group SO3. And the non abelian one is the dihedral group. And in this case, this group will be the gauge group in the set that we introduced before. And in this case, we have a principal bundle associated to this, to this one. So we can understand the, the gauge uh, symmetry in the usual sense in QFT. Two, two so we quantize the cotangent uh, space of this, of this homogeneous space, and we will obtain the covariance algebra. And our goal is to reproduce the, the same result of, for, for the finite dimensional case in this case. So we, we, we expect to find a gauge symmetry, sorry by the typo, that, uh, that define a family of quantum operation. So we will are interested in studying the evolution uh, and the relation of these dynamics that we can define through the Casimir of the algebra and the dynamics given by the modular operator. And we expect that these dynamics are the same. And with that, we, we want to study anomaly, anomalies in the Hamiltonian formalism. That is when we have, uh, when we, the generator of the classical uh, symmetry change the domain of definition of the Hamiltonian. The, that 
that formally is given by Steves in the paper of this year. So we are working in, in that. Uh, we are still finding a, a state, a faithful state that can give us the, the, the setup to apply modular theory in this context. But it doesn't um, easy find this state in this context. So as conclusion, we construct a canonical embedding and purification of a quantum system by means of the genus construction, and we identify a subsystem decomposition using modular theory in a general uh, quantum system. That is, uh, without uh, the necessity of have uh, a tensor product uh, space. So we identify a gauge symmetry in the sense of Doppler, Hack, and Robertson given by the unitaries of the original algebra and implemented in the genus space through the unitary of the commutant algebra. And finally, we define a family of entropy increasing quantum operation induced by gauge transformation, which live invariant the original system. So we find a relation between gauge symmetry and quantum operation. So here, we have some reference. Yeah, thank you. Do, do you have any question? Thank you. Thank you. Um, one question. Um, so, we use this uh, approach to uh, calculate entanglement entropies and lattice case theories. Sorry? Uh, we use an approach to compute entanglement entropy and lattice gauge theories. So that's a ground state of a lattice gauge theory. Because, yeah. I mean, there you don't have a tensor product in built space. Well, I mean, you could almost embed the system, but native description is not a tensor product uh, in built space. And I understand uh, that it's not a completely well understood. Uh, problem. There are some proposals by Domeni and others uh, about how to meaningfully uh, compute reduced density matrices in gauging weighting states and things like that. So, is there some relevance of uh, this construction for looking at this problem? Yeah, the, the, they was what proposed by the Chandra et al. in 2015. Uh, Yes, propose this this way to 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 compute this entanglement measure, uh, and they say that it, it's a good one because they obtain the same result when we restrict ourselves to systems that are uh, tensor products. That the 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 knowed one, the the one given by the reduced matrix, but. Uh, we we have the, this problem that is ambi the the density matrix obtained in this way is 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 not unique. So this is uh, this is still an open question: how to define a unique uh, form to 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 understand entanglement in this in this system when we doesn't have a a tensor product. A separated state, uh, space. So this is that's actually almost the same as this is related to the question I was going to ask, which is I, I thought you were saying that this ambiguity for defining density, for defining um, say entanglement for some subregion is all contained in the complement. What is this? Yes. Because in lattice gauge theories, that's not true. So I'm I'm a bit confused. Like for example, if you take just a 2D lattice with some U1 gauge fields living on the links. And you want to find, say, some reduced uh, density matrix on, say, half the lattice, then you have to cut those links. So you're going to get all these so called edge modes or whatever you like um, to satisfy the gauge constraint. And it's true that if you say, if you fix your subregion, um, define it however you like, then there's some freedom in choosing your complementary system. But in general, in this case, I, I have some ambiguity in what I do with those edge modes. Do I count them as system A? Do I enlarge it, like uh, Sufi was saying? Um, so I'm a bit confused as to how to reconcile this with the statement that the ambiguity is all in the other system. 
Yes, but in this case, we expect that the, the ambiguity will be in the auxiliary system because we want to assignate, uh, associate um, um, entropy to the original system. So we use the GNS construction as a, as a tool to, in order to find a way to, to construct a density. Okay, so and then the way that we do that, we find the original system did not have edge modes. So if I take my lattice and I cut it in half, I get some subsystem. And in the process of cutting in half, I get these new degrees of freedom. And that's the ambiguity I get in a lattice gauge theory in defining entanglement entropy. And it's not an ambiguity that's uniquely a priori associated with either the subsystem or the complement. Of course, but this gauge symmetry is given by the, the system in, by the, itself. But this one that we present here is an, an, an emergent one that appeared when we use the genus uh, formalis. So what would be the emergent gauge symmetry in, in this case then? Because I've broken the original gauge symmetry. This is some emergent symmetry that you get in that sort of fixes it up, the, the local observables or what? <laughs> we we don't know yet. Be, for that, we we will interpret it as a gauge symmetry in the sense of the H, uh, of Doppler Hat and um, a Robert. When we say that we will have a, a gauge group, when we can select our uh, observable algebra of the field algebra in that way, we expect that we resolve the ethylene molecule. We will be able to understand this gauge group like a a usual gauge symmetry in QFT. But we are working in that scene. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then let's thank Suad again. Thank you.